Hello and welcome back to the Coder's Legacy channel. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the basics of Scrapey, how it works, basic Scrapey concepts, how to use spiders, how to send a request to a website, how to return a response, and how to locate specific HTML elements within a web page. So some pretty cool concepts that you need to know in order to use Scrapey. Nothing too technical though, that's going to be in the later videos in this series. In the previous video, we talked about how to set up a Scrapey project and how to create a basic spider, which you can see over here. In this video, we're going to start from explaining how to use this spider. Okay, now let's begin. All right, so what I did in the previous video was to create the spider called quote spider, and it's used for scraping this website. All right, now let me just show you the website for a second. Okay, this is the website in question. There's just a bunch of, bunch of quotes over here. They have categories, they have tags, and then they have authors, and each author has an about page that we can view over here, okay? And then there are many pages over here as well. Let's start explaining the code. First, we import the scrapey module, of course. Next, we create our class, okay? This is essential for you to inherit from scrapey.spider, okay? This gives you a bunch of inherited functionality that, you know, inherited functions. If we go to the Scrapey class over here, the spider class, there's a bunch of stuff here that all gets inherited, okay? But that's not important, not right now. Next, we create these variables. These variables are here mostly for the benefit of Scrapey. Scrapey will automatically detect these variables and their values. Like, if you change anything over here, like if you remove the S from here, that's actually gonna cause it to be not detected. So make sure that you keep these names exactly as I have them here. Allowed domains basically is here to tell Scrapey which domains it's allowed to scrape, okay? So that it doesn't accidentally go on some other domain by accident. Start URLs tell Scrapey which URLs to start from. And you can even have multiple URLs over here, okay? And this basically will, you know, make Scrapey start on multiple URLs one by one. So if you want to scrape five pages, you can just include all five pages in this list. Okay. Name is a unique identifier. By the way, if you have multiple spiders in your project, never keep the same name. Okay. Otherwise it'll cause confusion. So in this folder, for example, we have this quote.py. You can go ahead and create more spiders if you want to. The parse function here is also extremely important. This is the main function that you'll be using. It's a function that you'll never call yourself, really. It's a function that Scrapey will automatically call whenever you execute your Scrapey spider. Okay, It's automatically executed. We just need to define the logic for it. How we define the logic for it? Well, what we do is make use of a keyword called yield. Yield is kind of like return. The, the same way we use return in normal Python functions, we're going to use yield here for the same purpose, to basically yield or return data to us. For example, I want to return this response object. Okay, now yield can only return a very specific uh, type of data, two or three specific types. It can either return a request, it can return a dictionary, or there's a third thing, but we'll talk about that later. It's not relevant right now, okay? So for example, we can return a dictionary here, okay, called response, and then store the response object in here, okay? And th this is something we actually did in the previous video, okay? I'm just repeating the same steps. Then what we can do is go in the root directory of our project folder, okay? Project folder is called tutorial, then we do scrapey, okay, crawl, then the name of our spider, quote, and then we do dash o output.json, all right? And this, this will send a scrapey request to this URL or URLs, and then it's going to return, okay? It's going to return a response. And the parse function that we have here says yield the response in this dictionary. And this is going to be, because of the command that we gave it over here, o 
output JSON. This is going to save that response, save the yielded dictionary in this output.json file. And this is the response object. The response object consists of a bunch of things. We can do uh, URL, for example. Okay, we can break this down a bit. And then we can do status. Okay, URL is the URL that it's trying to access. Status is the status of the request. 404, if the request was unsuccessful or the page was not found or something, 500 or something, 501, 502. Uh, status code if the uh, server was down or 200 if it's successful or 300 if it's also successful but there was some kind of redirect involved. Okay, these are fairly common knowledge in the web dev department. Okay, so here is our second output. And as you can see, it's just appending the same thing. Uh, the previous data is still here. So here is the URL in, a, in our dictionary and the status. Okay. So that's uh, how this is working right now. Now, obviously we don't really need to do this. This is just for a test. We're about to actually start now. We're gonna actually start scraping data. Okay, scraping data off of this website. Our goal in this tutorial is to extract data from this web page. Obviously, we don't want all of it. There's a lot of stuff in here. We only want certain parts of it, usually. So that's what we're gonna try doing in this tutorial. Come back to our code file and activate the scrapey shell. This is a really easy way and accessible way of quickly executing scrapey commands. And it's also really good for learning purposes. Copy paste this URL, all right, and come down here in the scrapey shell, type fetch, and then uh, quotes, paste the URL in here, and then hit enter. Now this, if this says uh, 200 over here, if this gives us a 200 status, then it's opened properly. And now we can begin accessing the response object very quickly. So do response, for example, and just hit enter. And you can see the response object over here. We can do response.body and this shows us the entire body for the response object. You can see all this over here. Cool. This is all the HTML text in the page. It's kind of unreadable right now because we're not really meant to read the XML data. Sorry, the HTML data. What we're going to do is do something very specific. Like maybe we want to access all of the hyperlinks. We want all of the hyperlinks inside the page. How do we do that? Well, for this, we're going to use something called selectors. Selectors are basically ways of filtering through and extracting certain HTML elements from this entire body. There are two types of selectors, CSS selectors and expat selectors. Expat is harder to use, so we'll cover that later. CSS selectors are easier to learn and more than enough for now. All right, let's talk about those response.css and then brackets and within these brackets include the name of the html tag that you want this is basically how to use css selectors we can do a to get hyperlinks a is the name of the html tag for links okay then do get or get all get will return one get all will return all so if we press enter we suddenly get all of these tags all right, HTML tags, it's, they're in the list. So this is pretty useful. What we just did was extracted all of the links from a web page, and we can do this for any HTML tag. Okay, now let's just do get, just to get a good look at one of them. Now, what if we wanted the uh, text? What if we only wanted the text of this URL, right? It's possible that we don't want the HTML tag itself. What we want maybe is just this portion over here. So what we can do is double colon over here, then write text and then hit enter. And this will give us this. Pretty cool, right? This is basically a way of extracting text from an HTML tag. It works on multiple HTML tags like uh, hyperlinks and on images as well, I think. All right, so what else can we do? 
well, what if we wanted to access this, the HRF? How would we do that? Well, what we would do is double colon, ATTR for attribute, and then open up brackets, and within these brackets, write HRF. Okay, then hit enter. And this gives us the HRF. All right, now let's try doing this for for all hyperlinks inside our web page. So this returns all of them. We can see them all over here. This one clearly goes to the home page. This one goes to the login page. This one goes to the Albert Einstein page. And then we can even see some repetitions in here. Like there's one author slash Albert Einstein and another author slash Albert Einstein. This is easily possible because there could be multiple quotes by Albert Einstein and each quote has one URL that leads to Albert Einstein. So this is also something to keep in mind that there can be duplication, okay? And yeah, this is a very basic way of how we can extract data, but I've only shown you how to do this through the scrapey shell right now. Let's close this, okay? And come back over here to our parse function. Let me remove this. And what we're going to do is now use the same CSS selector over here. So what we'll do is um, for uh, what are we trying to get? Let's say we're still trying to get links. So what we'll do is for link in response dot CSS a. OK, and let's assume that we want the link HRF. So what we'll do is ATTR HRF. All right. And then inside this for loop, we're going to do yield, okay? And then over here, I'll do, uh, what is this? It's a HRF, right? So we'll call it HRF and then link, link HRF. All right, so basically, if you didn't understand this, what we're doing is calling this response.css function, then this data over here, that we get, we're iterating through all of it, and then we're yielding it, okay? We're yielding it into the output.json file. Let me go ahead and run that. Scrapey crawl quote dash o output.json. And this is gonna create the JSON file. And over here is not what I expected. Something went wrong, clearly. This was my bad. We had to call the get function over here. This returns the scrapey object, but it doesn't give us the actual data. Okay, so let's try this again. Okay, now let's check this file. And the original data is still here. The original data, uh, we, we should, you know, ideally delete this file each time. But here is the new and correct data, which contains all of the HRF tags. Pretty cool, right? We can see that this is all the tags. These are more tags, tags for pages and authors, etc. Pretty useful, right? So this is a very basic way of how we can do web scraping with Scrapey. Okay, this is just the basics. I was just giving you an overview. To recap, we discussed what Scrapey is how to use spiders, how to use the scrapey shell, how to yield data to an output file, and how to use a CSS selector to acquire an HTML tag, how to acquire its attributes, and how to acquire the text. In the next video, we're going to talk about CSS selectors completely, like a video completely on CSS selectors. We're gonna go to this website again and just practice trying many different things. We're just going to try, you know, a whole bunch of different examples and stuff to build our understanding on how to use CSS selectors. And, you know, this will help us understand how we can scrape data and improve our scraping logic. Okay. See you guys in the next video.